I'm Peter Block here in New Orleans at the AHA annual meeting. With me is Mike Gibson. Mike is from my old stamping grounds in Boston in the Harvard system. Mike, the pioneer PCI trial, finally, Mike, a trial that's positive and positive in a very good way. So tell me about Pioneer. Well, Peter, we have a lot of people out there who have AFib and get a stent placed, uh, about 10% of the population coming to cath lab. To this point, we've combined full-dose warfarin with aspirin and clopidogrel, and we've had 15% rates of bleeding. We all want something safer. So the two strategies are to replace warfarin with something else that's safer, and we did that by replacing it with rivaroxaban, or you can drop aspirin. And we tried all those combinations. And what we found is if you use Riva at a reduced dose of 15, get rid of aspirin and use a thionopyridine, so a Woos-like strategy, or give baby dose Riva 2.5 milligrams twice a day with aspirin and clopidogrel, you can dramatically reduce bleeding. You'd only have to treat 11 to 12 patients to prevent one clinically significant bleeding event. You'd only have to treat 10 to 15 patients to prevent one recurrent hospitalization. That's extraordinary. I mean, that's a major breakthrough in our understanding of how to deal with these folks who are always a problem. You stent them and then you scratch your head and say, my God, what do we do now? So <clears throat> the control group in this group was standard warfarin, DAPT, and then cross your fingers, is that right? Correct, yeah, full dose warfarin, INR two to three, low dose aspirin, thionopyridine of your choice, turned out 95% of the time people gave clopidogrel. And how did you monitor the uh, warfarin business? Did you take care of them so that they actually were within range? Yeah, that's always the big question. Did you give warfarin the way you should? And we had a time and therapeutic range that averaged 65 percent, one of the highest uh, reported today. Okay, so you really did well on that yes. one. Okay, so Mike, now we have a positive trial. The two arms that included the low dose of Roxaban being the best group. Which of those two groups should we use? I mean, sooner or later we have to say, okay, this is the way you treat patients with atrial fibrillation and a stent. So what do you recommend? If someone has uh, a high bleeding risk and uh, a low ischemic risk, I would go with the 15 milligram of Riva plus monotherapy with a thionopyridine. That's the majority of patients. If, on the other hand, someone had a uh, high-risk lesion, like a left main stent, and you, you were young and had a low bleeding risk, that might be the patient for the baby dose Riva with uh, aspirin and clopidogrel. So the aspirin clopidogrel combination really does increase the risk of bleeding a little bit more, doesn't it? So for the low-risk patient, that's the way to go. And it sounds to me like we finally have an answer. So for all the interventional cardiologists out there and people who are about to get a stent in NAF, we finally got to the point where we can say we're pretty sure this is the right way to go. Are you going to do a longer-term trial, Mike? I don't think so. I think the answer is so clear on bleeding uh, that that we don't need to do something more. The rates of efficacy were comparable, uh, and I think we feel pretty good that they were so low, they were so similar that we can probably stop here. Okay, so no stroke increase in the people that had the low dose or high dose river. You, you combine the ischemic and the hemorrhagic together here in stroke, and uh, the rates were so low, 1.5%. Peter, if we wanted to do a non-inferiority trial, we would have to study over 30,000 patients in each arm. That's not going to happen. Not gonna so, happen. yeah. All right, so there's your answer. It looks like we finally gotten there. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Peter.